on now to hear five lightning talks of some examples of reimagining around specific areas. So I've given people a three minute challenge. So I'd like to first of all invite uh, Leslie to share about some ideas about reimagining around children's ministry. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Leslie and I'm the youth and children's worker at Curtin Church in Kirk. I hope you can all hear me okay. I've been asked to talk tonight about reimagining children's ministry, stopping Sunday school to include everyone in worship and faith nurture. And the first thing that I want to say here um, would be about 12 years ago that we actually stopped talking about Sunday school altogether. We don't have a Sunday school, we have a junior church with different sections uh, within it. And I think that this was really the first uh, part in our journey of reimagining our children's ministry. And this was something that you know had been identified by our minister, Ian, and our church session. And this was one of the reasons why I was employed by a congregation to be that someone who would be focused on the needs of all our young people, from the littlest to the oldest, and to walk with them on their faith journey, to nurture them and to share and live out the gospel with them. One of my favourite Bible passages comes from the book of Mark, and I'd like to just share these few verses with you now. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not see the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and he blessed them. The one thing that's never really sat well with me during my, my time is when we actually used to send the children out of the building during communion. And at one point, our children and young people wouldn't even enter the building. They would go straight to their groups. The kids knew that something was happening and they wanted to be part of it. And we'd created an, an environment when we were really shutting them out, when we really should have been welcoming them in at every opportunity to engage them at every point of worship. We didn't change things overnight. Well, things never change quickly in churches. But our first change was to start bringing them in at the start of the service and to spend time with them as we would normally do. And they then progressed on to staying and having communion with us. And they love this. During our time of being out of our, our buildings and worship digitally, as we look towards what will be our new normal, we're spending some time planning and thinking about what our return to worship for all our members will look like. And one of the things we want to focus on and making different from the very start is not to have this separate environment for our children and young people, not to send them away to different halls to spend time away from their family and their church family. And if we can create an engaging environment for them, our children are going to become absorbed in what they are doing. They learn from what they see and hear around them. They will watch those around them and copy language and behaviour. And how are we going to do this? Well, our plan is to have a rolling programme on a Sunday morning. We're going to start with some hospitality. We're going to have breakfast and tea and coffee together, followed with worship beginning, a worship that's for all ages, a worship that all who come along can take something away from it and most importantly, bring something to it. Our children and young people have got an awful lot to teach us and they have a wonderful openness and enthusiasm. The service would take on at some point a quieter reflective element, but still the focus being on that it's a worship for all. And people would be encouraged to come and go whenever they would like to. By including our children and young people in our worship, we're allowing them to learn and develop their abilities in playing their part in this worship. It builds on their self-worth and it aids them to see that they are really part of this church family that we all talk about. Hi, everybody. Um, 
I'm Sue, I'm from St. Columbus in Aberdeen, and I'm talking about how we are reimagining re family ministry, how we are reimagining what we do to share the gospel with families, what we do to disciple families, and what we do to support them, all within the context of our bigger church family. Like many of you, I'm sure, for years we have run holiday clubs to the usual model, where kids are in the hall, we have a tea room for parents, and young people come in the evenings. But last summer, of course, that model of holiday club had to change. We found ourselves offering a holiday club that was completely different. Members of our church family delivered packs to families' doors, and then the club was partly online. We had the upfront teaching delivered by video and group teaching via Zoom. The club was partly at home. There was crafts and challenges to do. And the club was partly out and about in our community as we set up mystery trails in our green spaces. And here's what happened. We watched as families played, learned and chatted about Jesus together. Even the dads took part. Grandparents and wider family joined in. Families connected with each other out and about on the trails and through a Facebook group. Community was created. There were intergenerational links made as the doorstep deliveries led to conversations on those doorsteps. It was extraordinary and not one part of it was in the building, and not one part of it was on a Sunday morning. And we don't want to go back. We want to reimagine our family ministry to look like that holiday club. So firstly, we want to create opportunities for families to learn, grow, and worship together. Maybe we'll have to change Sunday worship or Sunday school. We're still looking at that. We're hoping to try outdoor church a couple of times this term, and maybe that will be a way forward for us. For Holiday Club this summer, we're, we're not going back. We're going to invite families to register and attend as families. And there will be um, trails and challenges for them still to go away and do as families. We might run it over a weekend instead of midweek, so it's more likely that dads can be part of it as well. Secondly, whatever we do has to fit in with their life not with our church schedule. So for example, we'll keep an online element. Um, anything we set up like trails and challenges will run over a few days so families can access it and their time when they have the ability to do so. Bible studies for grown-ups will stay on Zoom in the evenings, um, later in the evening, so parents can join in without babysitting problems or difficulty getting there. Thirdly, we want families to keep exploring and growing faith at home. So Holiday Club will still include elements, perhaps the crafts that will be completed at home. Throughout the year, we'll invite families to take part in challenges um, and projects that encourage them to talk about faith and do faith together. For example, creating images or video to go alongside one of our favourite songs or a Bible story. At key seasons, we'll deliver packs to encourage faith at home, but not too often because we don't want to overwhelm families who already have a busy schedule. And we might consider setting up more trails throughout the year, trails which pose questions as you follow them along, but don't provide the answers. Instead, they're just simply encouraging the discussion and the chat about Jesus in those families and between groups of friends. And fourthly and finally, we, we've realised that building community and building links across the church family, across all generations, is key. So we want to create opportunities like those doorstep deliveries did for our church family to connect and build relationships with each other and with new families. So we'll invite the whole church family to take part in whatever we do wherever possible. And if they can't come, we'll share videos and stories to connect everybody together. We want to create opportunities for the whole church family to play together, maybe regular church picnics or a gardening project or treasure hunts. The possibilities are endless. And we'll use social media groups to connect and to be a community as an alternative place to be a community. So a place where folk can engage at a time that works for them. So that's where we're at. It's a work in progress. There will be successes and failures along the way, but we are excited and we're praying that through all we do, many children, young people and adults meet Jesus and grow in their journey with him. Thank you. Um, I'm Vicky and I'm going to be talking about reimagining youth ministry. And it's no surprise that youth work is all about relationships. It's always been all about relationships and that really hasn't changed. 
Um, so in thinking about coming back to face-to-face -face work or what might be the next steps forwards, I'm really encouraging people to think about how they can help young people to reconnect uh, with each other. Um, if young people go to different schools that come to your youth groups and your different things in your community, they may not really have seen an awful lot of each other yet. Um, how do they reconnect with leaders and volunteers and trusted adults? How do they connect with their wider communities and the church community that they're part of? And really importantly, how do they connect with God? Um, a lot of young people that I've spoken to have spoken about feeling very, very distant from God at the moment, um, that they, he's just not really been a feature in their lives for the last year. And they're not sure what to do with that and where to go. And they've got some, some big questions. Um, and sometimes they've got no questions. And there's a whole spectrum of different places that they're coming from. Um, so I, I'm encouraging people to start with shared and relaxed activity um, and to start small. You don't need to relaunch back into the same thing that you were doing um, back last March. Uh, why don't you try going for a walk or meeting just a couple of young people for coffee? Maybe start with some games or an outdoor movie night. And things that get young people in the same place, doing something together with little pressure, but lots of opportunity for conversation um, and just sharing where they're at and what they're, asked, what they're wondering about at the moment. Um, lots of spaces to talk and to reflect and then to bring up those things that young people are asking about and talking about um, to shape your programme. Uh, you might want to think about building in some thinking about spiritual practices, ways that young people can connect with God for themselves. Um, how are you going to help them to pray or to lament, to process the things that have been happening over the last year? How are you going to help them to um, read the Bible for themselves? Again, not, it's not reinventing the wheel. These are things that we've always done, but maybe just thinking intentionally. How, how are those questions connecting with young people in your community at the moment? Um, and on the other hand, if you've been meeting online and that's been working for your group, carry on. Um, there will be new expressions of youth work, new ways that you're connecting with young people. And that could be really valuable, especially if you've got a group who are coming to a natural transition point, like moving off to university in the next year. Uh, the online space that we've developed over the last year can help you to keep those relationships as those young people move off into independent adulthood. Um, so that would be something to maybe think about keeping going, maybe with less intensity than you're doing just now, uh, but it can be a way to keep relationships and be intentional about re-engaging with the wider church as well. Um, a lot of things this year have become quite age siloed. So we've just had the young people, we've just had children, and that's often easy with the guidelines we've got at the moment to keep things in age groups. But as we move forward, how do you help children and young people to really get to be reconnected with the wider church that they're part of? Um, so just small questions to start thinking about. Hi, I'm Brian and I'm Minister in Lanark and I'm going to talk about reimagining worship. Things have changed over the last year and the way people engage with the church has changed over the last year. Uh, people have become much more discerning about what they watch, what they come to, they have choice. And I know that sounds strange as we've just come out of a pandemic, but they do have choice. Um, I'm particularly interested in technology and worship and thinking about how we can use that. We've been broadcasting for over 10 years, our Sunday services. And, and here's the thing we need to be real about this in the church. We need to get to grips with how we communicate with people. It's not enough just to switch a camera on in the corner of our church and expect people to look in on what we're doing. We need to be intentional, there's that word again. We need to be intentional about what we do, what we produce, what we bring to the table. We need, as churches, to come into the 21st century. That's what the post-pandemic world is going to be about. And for an organisation that, well, let's face it, are struggling occasionally to get out of the 18th century, we've got a bit of a mountain to climb. In Greyfriars in Lanark, we're imagining reimagining worship in this way. We're not rushing back. We're not rushing back to Sunday at 11 and everything that's normal. We're not rushing back because... To be honest, we need to take stock. We want to have as the majority of people with us as we can on a Sunday, and that for us means a little bit of 
online worship. We need to create that properly and not just put a camera in a church and point it at me, no matter how good that might feel to me and my ego. We're having midweek afternoon, we're having midweek evening, we're having in-person. But here's the thing, this Kirk session decided that the in-person services on a Sunday, they would be, for the next few months, given over to families. To families to re-engage with church, to have a cafe-style, interactive-style worship, or more interactive, as the priority for our church. We've got our first cafe church this Sunday in over a year, and I'm excited about it. But we're not broadcasting it. We're not sticking a camera on because we don't want people to be looking in on what we're doing and feel that it's not for them or they're somehow disenfranchised. Why? Well, we need to make sure people feel that things are for them, that they are a part of worship, not just sitting at the sidelines. So from my comfy chair, that's where I take worship online. It's the content we produce, it's for people who are watching in, and we need to know at every point as we reimagine worship, who is it that we are worshipping with and what is it that we are creating for them in person or online or whatever. We have to be intentional. It's a challenge that we have to grasp because I don't think in five years, if we don't grasp it, we won't be here. Hi, I'm Douglas, Minister at East New Trinity, linked with St Morin's in the New Presbytery of Fife. And I'm reimagining, with the congregations here, church in the community. And you will see how each of the talks that have gone before me link in to this quite nicely. Uh, and how it is really important in each of our unique communities. The perception of need is different to meeting actual need. The perception of need is different to meeting actual need because we can think that what we're doing is right. We can think that because we know how to do what we're doing, we should just do it. But when it hasn't run for over a year, who's missing it? Who's missing it most? Is it the people for whom that activity was being provided? Or is it the people who ran it who are clinging tightly to what they've done and what they've had involvement in and what's happened in the past, the way it's I been. Community needs have changed on the whole, however, the church hasn't. We must be, and this is this word yet again, we must be intentionally interested in people. People that's not ourselves, our people, all people. You know, even those who are out there on the periphery, and those that weren't part of the activities that you maybe once were doing. So parents, older people, younger people, the entire community together. And here's another thing, competition is not key, but identification is. We've looked at how we can get alongside groups that already exist within the community to help them achieve their goals, not compete against them for ideas, not compete against them for people to do the jobs, because let's be honest, these types of resources are limited in small villages. Changing how we see and meet need is key to all that we've been planning. How we support what's already in place in the community is really important, absolutely. But why we support them and who we are serving ultimately is what identifies us as different. Supporting people, living the gospel meaningfully, that's how the church is going to be identified as relevant in our communities. And we've mentioned the C word a few times tonight, that, that COVID has been a problem, yes, but COVID is not necessarily a barrier. Ah, but what about the rules? We're just not allowed. Yes, perhaps not the way you've I always done it, but what about other ways that you can do it? So we've started new initiatives, Hope Cafe, which is currently an online brand that caters for the social emotional needs of everyone. It brings them hope in their home. But we're going to have hope in a field sometime soon um, with a maze of sunflowers. That's assuming it warms up and stops blowing a gale for five minutes. 
we're going to have, or we've got tea time together, an intergenerational community worship experience for folks again of all ages that currently is online, but might stay online dependent on what the needs of families are. This all gave a mechanism to help us address gaps that exist in community provision while still supporting the groups that exist there. But the biggest change of mindset needs to come from those who make decisions, the eldership and the members, before it can be seen in the community. How do you measure success? How do you measure success? Did you see him? He was so excited to see what the families were sharing in reference to an older man. It was emotional watching all those wee Zoom boxes on my screen and everyone pulling together as a community, starting to sow the sunflower seeds and sharing that hope far and wide. Bums and pews or positive engagement, you decide what's best.